Hey what's up YouTube and welcome back to another video. Happy iPhone week as the long awaited, somewhat delayed iPhone 12 is finally here in all its glory. I thought I'd jump right into some of the things that you should do when you get your iPhone 12 to make sure you have it set up just the way you need it. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe, leave a message down below, and thanks for watching. Battery. The iPhone and iOS provide detailed battery readouts and detailed breakdowns of exactly which app and features are consuming the most amount of battery. This is important to check out right off the bat as it provides a valuable baseline that you can use to track how your battery is being used over the lifetime of your phone. To access the battery readout menu, go into settings and battery and scroll down to see an app by app breakdown of your battery activity on your iPhone 12. The iPhone 12 contains a 28 15 milliamp hour battery and between actively changing the brightness, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and other settings, I found the battery menu to be extremely helpful just in terms of managing which apps software update. One of the first things that you want to do with your brand new iPhone is to make sure that it has the latest iOS version and to toggle automatic software updates to your liking. Of course, if you're downloading a new version of iOS, you'll probably want to toggle Wi-Fi on as it's a pretty large file usually and you don't want to eat up your precious data. The iOS update can be downloaded and installed completely wirelessly so you won't have to pair it to a Mac or another PC. Simply go into Settings, General and, and Software Update. At the time of this video, the iPhone 12 on release is running iOS 14.1. You'll generally want to update to the newest version of iOS as soon as it becomes available, just to make sure any bugs and performance issues are ironed out as soon as possible. It also keeps your phone secure and maximizes all the features of your iPhone 12. Thankfully, iOS makes this easy as there's a toggle in the software update menu to automatically install any updates that are downloaded. Dark Mode Dark Mode hasn't been available for iOS for all too long, so you should take advantage of it now that you can with your brand new iPhone 12. Having a phone that can utilize a Dark Mode is reported to have a host of benefits. Least of all is reducing overall eye strain, particularly if you're using your phones for extended periods of time. Other benefits can include increased battery performance, and reportedly it helps a lot of users focus on their work and remain productive over long periods of time. The iPhone 12 has a beefy 12,000 nits of brightness, so this is a beautiful, very bright screen. And personally, I found that switching on dark mode really did help me stare at the thing for hours at a time. The default enabled auto brightness also helps with eye strain, but overall, I found that the more that I could use dark mode, the easier that it was on my eyes. To enable dark mode, head over to your trusty settings option. Scroll down to display and brightness, and at the top of the menu, you'll be able to see the toggle for dark mode. The iPhone 12 comes equipped with the ability to send out an emergency SOS call, but what a lot of people overlook is that you can actually pre-enter the name, email, and phone number of your emergency contact prior to making an emergency call. To do so, head over to your settings menu and hit emergency SOS, and you'll be able to access this information through medical ID. Hopefully you never have to use this feature, but it's always good out of due diligence to make sure that the right person can be contacted at the right time. Change fetch data settings. If you use your iPhone extensively for email and or use the Gmail app on your iPhone, you might have noticed that when you switch over to a new phone, you're not receiving notifications for your newest emails right away. You'll want to first check that you made sure that you entered your email address and password incorrectly. And after you've confirmed this, you'll want to head over to your settings menu and change the check mail fetch setting. A lot of the time the people don't have this set up correctly, which means you won't receive notifications for incoming emails. You can also adjust this if you're trying to conserve data. As if you have your iPhone set to check for data too often, you're consuming a lot of online data. To access the fetch data settings, simply go into your settings app, password and accounts, and fetch new data. From here you can set it to automatically, manually, hourly, every 30 minutes, and every 15 minutes. Set it to your liking to make sure that you get notifications for incoming mail on apps like the default mail app and Gmail as well. 
Some email clients will have the ability to set push as the setting for fetch new data. This ensures that whenever you receive a new email, that it automatically sets a new notification for you. This is probably the most prompt way to check your email, however, it's not available for all email clients. Display settings. The iPhone 12 has an incredibly bright, high resolution display that adjusts itself based on the environment that it's in. And one of the first things that you should do, since the display is the main part of your phone experience, is to adjust the display settings to your liking. I usually like to turn automatic brightness off, as I like to customize the brightness depending on the room that I'm in. I also like to turn off and customize my auto lock and also the raise to wake feature. Check out some of the other options in a display and brightness setting on your iPhone 12 to get it just the way you like it. Notifications. Notifications are a huge part of the smartphone and iPhone experience and the iPhone 12 is no different. So much so that there's apps specifically designed to organize and control how many notifications you're getting. And with so many apps available to you that come pre-installed on the iPhone, you want to make sure that you're getting just the notifications that you want to. So in order to customize which apps have access to notifications, simply go into settings and notifications and and switch on exactly which apps you want to be notifying with you on an active basis. Previous device backup. If you're coming from another iOS device and you're switching to the new iPhone 12, you'll likely want to back up your first device first prior to switching to the iPhone 12. This serves two purposes as it allows you to transfer a lot of your information from your previous iPhone to the iPhone 12 relatively seamlessly and also it serves as a backup to restore your personal data and settings on your iPhone in case push comes to shove. Thankfully, Apple has made this relatively easy with iCloud, as iCloud makes a copy of all the information on your previous iPhone or iOS device. And when your device is backed up on iCloud, it's relatively easy to set up a new device and or restore information from a previous device. So to back up your iPhone on iCloud, simply go into settings, go into your Apple ID and hit iCloud. Here you'll have a large menu with many toggles. Scroll down to backup and you can select an iCloud backup. You'll likely want to do this over Wi-Fi as your iPhone can contain a huge amount of information and you don't want to eat up your precious limited data just backing up your phone. Screen time. With your brand new iPhone 12, you're likely pretty excited and will likely spend an exorbitant amount of time just having the screen on and using your new device. The new Apple chip and new features with the iPhone 12 will likely mean that you'll be using your phone a little bit more, if not a lot more than usual. So in terms of your own digital well-being, you'll want to track how much time you're spending glued to your brand new iPhone 12. Thankfully, Apple has built in a feature into iOS that allows you to do so. Simply go into settings and turn on screen time to get weekly reports on detailed analysis on how long your screen is on and how much time you spend dedicated to each individual app. You might be surprised with just how much time you spend on your phone. A Face ID. The iPhone 12 of course does not have a home button like the iPhone SE, so for security on your phone you have a few choices like the passcode and of course Face ID. With any new iPhone with Face ID you'll have to set it up manually, but there's also a host of options that come with Face ID that you can change to your liking. This includes of course the attention setting to make sure that you have to be looking at your phone in order to unlock it with your face. There's also a bunch of other settings in the Face ID setting menu that allows you to customize exactly what on your phone requires unlocking via Face ID. Check these settings out for yourself and customize exactly what is required on your phone for security in terms of unlocking with your Face ID. So there you have it everyone, 10 things that you should do when you're setting up your iPhone 12 for the first time. If you have some other vital features upon setup, don't forget to leave a message down below. Hit that subscribe button and thanks.